Welcome to Pulmonology. Our approach in this lecture series will be the patient walking through that door with signs and symptoms. The patient walks in with cough. The history of that cough, was it a dry cough? Was it productive? In terms of productive, what color was it? Was it stained as being brown? Was it rusty? Uh, was it yellow? Was it green? Signs and symptoms is how you need to approach pulmonology here so that you have a bird's eye view of what's going on with pathophysiology for each of the diseases and infections that we shall cover. We'll walk through restrictive and obstructive diseases, but prior to any of that, let's first take a look at signs and symptoms. Overview of uh, our bronchial tree. Begin the proximal region with the, uh, the trachea. And then as we divide, divide, divide into branches or divisions, and by the time you get all the way down to the alveoli distally, well, you can only imagine as to how thin that alveoli is, right? And what about that trachea? The trachea is a supportive structure. It is basically an air tube. That's exactly what it is. Meaning to say that it is then going to take the air that's coming in from the ambient air, which at sea level is what, please? Good. 760 millimeters at sea level. And uh, you need to make sure that that trachea is nice and strong. So therefore, it is made up of cartilage or cartilaginous rings. And then also, in the upper portion or the proximal portion of a respiratory tree, then we must have a method by which we defend ourselves against that ambient air. Think about ambient air. It has a lot of stuff in there. It has antigens. It has allergens, so on and so forth. So we need to make sure that we keep things like that out. And so therefore, think about the histology here as you branch deeper down into the alveoli. That's important for you to understand and keep in mind. I don't want you to just take a look at this and read what's on the y-axis or on the vertical uh, parallel uh, words here. That's just giving you an overview and things that you already know. But what you're also bringing into play is what is the function of the trachea? What kind of cells does it have? It has mucociliary clearance, so thus it has to be columnar cells, it has to be ciliated, and the mucociliary clearance helps you take out any unwanted particles that you're breathing in, hmm? and you have to have mucus, right? That's the proximal portion. And then as you go further distally, well, do you have cilia down in the alveoli? Of course you don't. Why is the alveoli so thin? Type 1, type 2 pneumocytes are present. We know that it's squamous-like. It has to be very thin. Because what's across the alveolar membrane, please? Exactly. It's the pulmonary capillaries, responsible for quite a bit of gas exchange. So why would you want large columnar cells down there? And what does that mean to you pathologically? Now, what we shall do moving forward, please understand, is that we're going to plug in our infections into this respiratory tree. And we're going to add in some diseases. For example, we'll put in the most common Lung cancer, adenocarcinoma, isn't it? It is. Adenocarcinoma is the most common. But Dr. Raj, I thought that smoking was heavily, heavily associated with small cell lung cancer. That it is. Or squamous cell cancer. That it is. However, what if you're a non-smoker? And uh, could you still develop uh, lung cancer? Sure you could. In the United States, it is the number one killer in both men and women. Lung cancer is in terms of mortality. So therefore, we will have to know everything about bronchogenic adenocarcinoma. So as we go through here, all we're doing here is setting up a nice little tree here. And as we have in the proximal portion, these are cartilaginous. And as you move further down into the bronchiole, the alveolar duct, and then we the alveoli. Hmm? The upper portion is known as a conducting zone. That's an important description that you need to know. Remember all this from anatomy and physiology, right? And the conducting zone literally is conducting air from the outside world down into the trachea. And then as you move distally beyond the alveolar duct, then you get into the respiratory zone. Makes perfect sense. What's the respiratory zone responsible for? Gas exchange, hence the name respiratory. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best 
you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.